The Niche Zero is a great espresso grinder, but some users are less than thrilled with its performance when grinding for pour over. I happen to be very fond of mine and my Eureka Specialita, and I would hate to have to choose between them. Still, for pour over and French press, the Eureka has always been my first choice between the two. The Zero's conical burrs typically produce a lot of fines, which give us delicious espresso, but those tiny particles tend to get overcooked with longer contact times and release harsh bitterness and astringent flavors. I've been thinking about this problem recently, and I've come up with a solution. An easy hack that won't cost you a cent. You know, the best kind. So let's get into it. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. In a previous video, I said that niche users ought to use the fastest funnel and filter combination possible. I recommended grinding for around four minutes contact time to avoid excessive bitterness from the overabundance of fines. And that is sound advice. But if we could better control fines production, we could use a longer contact time and get a stronger and more balanced flavor. So that's what we're going to do today. Try to get more particles in the medium fine range and fewer extremely tiny ones. Now the NFC disc reduces popcorning and boulder production and helps to regulate the feed rate, which in turn helps to even up the particle sizes. So I recommend always using it for pour over. Personally, I think it's good for espresso too, but not everyone agrees. I'll get into that another time. There are two factors we want to adjust. First, the feed rate, which, as I said, the NFC disc regulates and improves. And second, the force pushing the beans as they're being ground, which is a consequence of the mass in the hopper above. These two factors, speed and force, affect each other, but they're not the same and we can adjust them independently. A greater mass in the hopper will force the beans harder against the burrs, resulting in more crushing and battering, and therefore more fines. But it's not constant. As you grind through a dose, the mass decreases, so the downforce is steadily reducing and the coffee grit comes out coarser toward the end. For espresso, we're usually grinding a dose anywhere between 7 and 21 grams, so this effect is moderate when we use the NFC disc. But a 30 or 40 gram dose is going to behave differently with a lot of fines produced at the start and particles becoming progressively larger as the downforce attenuates. All single dose grinders behave this way. Flats, conicals, it doesn't matter. You'll always see proportionally more fines in heavier doses. On-demand grinders are different. They're designed to maintain a fairly constant downforce so long as the hopper is more than about a quarter full. When you go below that threshold, the downforce starts decreasing gradually and that affects the grit characteristics, as it does with single dosing. If you need a really predictable grind without having to think about it, like when you're working in a busy cafe, you'll want a large hopper that you will refill before it reaches the level where the downforce becomes variable. So I think you know where I'm headed here. We've got this little single doser that's focused on espresso and we want to make drip coffee using a dose that's two or three times heavier than we'd normally use. If we divide a larger dose in two, we should see fewer fines. So let me demonstrate. I've dialed in the grinder for a five and a half minute brew using 30 grams of coffee with 400 milliliters of water in and around 300 out for about a one to 10 ratio. I'll grind 15 grams at a time. The catch cup I'm using here isn't ideal, but the chute prevents it from falling or wandering too far, so it'll do for now. Because I ground two batches, I might get some layering, so I'll stir the sample first. I'm not sure how well the camera is catching this, but the grind is rather fine overall. Pretty much what I recommend for the best pour over. 
I roasted this coffee toward the dark end of the scale, although it's not oily and the silver skin is still dark yellow. It got close to the start of second crack. Personally, this is about my maximum for dark roasting, and I would prefer this for espresso, but there's a reason for using this sample today. If we're going to encounter the excessive bitterness and astringency that we might expect from an espresso grinder, a dark roast is more likely to show it in a pour over. So this is a hard test. You can see clearly that the residue of fines is modest for a conical burr grinder, pretty thin on the sides of the paper and on top of the bed. This is something you're more likely to see from a flat burr machine. You can see the coffee looks strong and it is concentrated. The flavor is rich and toasty and complex. Nice balance too. The acidity is present and the bitterness is round and enjoyable, like the bitterness of chocolate or beer. This is a delicious pot of coffee. It's no joke. You really can taste the difference between using a split dose and grinding 30 or 40 grams in one go. So if you're struggling to get the pour over you want out of your niche zero, first, be sure to use the NFC disc and second, try dividing your dose into half or even thirds if you have the patience and dial in for a contact time somewhere between five and six minutes. With a little patience and tweaking, I think you can get exactly the flavor you've been aiming for. In other words, I think that once you adapt to it, the Zero can be a competent all-purpose grinder. And if you have a flat burr single doser, this trick absolutely will change the grind dynamics, enough for you to taste, so by all means, experiment with it. I'm planning to do that myself, and if I find something interesting, I'll publish a short video about it. So, keep in touch. Cheers!